Charles Louis Mortgage Advisors, 0161 959 0166. Let's start with you, Andy. Uh, City's victories this week have been a 7-0 thrashing of Leeds, followed by a 4-0 win up at Newcastle. Uh, almost faultless, I would suggest, uh, in spite of the fact that the personnel slightly change. Uh, I don't know how you sum this up, because when something is so perfect, I know Pep was a little bit critical of the performance at Newcastle, which... Frankly, I'm a bit stounded pie, but I guess that's what makes him what he is. You know, he's striving for, for perfection. Well, that was as near perfection as I can imagine it. You know, you're a manager, Andy. I mean, how, how do you sum up the last two performances? I think the Leeds was exceptional. I thought, um, you know, they caught us on a very good night and I thought they were poor. Um, and I think, I think the, the injuries they have, I think people just look over at, you know, they obviously lost against Arsenal and I've had to listen to a lot of comments from people this week talking about them, but you've got six or seven key players missing any squad, especially when your quality is not the depth of the top sort of six clubs that they have. You're always going to struggle. So I thought they were a bit harsh, some of the comments about uh, the Leeds performance, but you know, we were very, very good on the day and you know, Bielsa got it wrong, got it completely wrong against us. I thought there's no way they're going to go toe-to-toe against Man City and come to the Etihad and think that they're going to be able to play the way they play. I expected a deep block and them trying to play from there, but they were really, really poor. And I think uh, anyone who actually called the manager out after the game were right to do that after the, the, the City game because the players are all right there. You know, you're giving players information on what you want to do and how you want to be perceived as a manager. And this is my philosophy. But you've still got to look after your players. And, and they were lucky they weren't on the end of a 10, 11, 12, which would, you know, a, a record in the Premier League. And that's down to the manager and the way he set them up. And he got it horribly wrong. Newcastle, I can understand um, because we've been so good now for the best part. You know, you take the Leipzig game out away. We've been so good for a, a period of time now that the standards are so high that in the first half, we were sloppy. I didn't move the ball quick enough. Uh, weren't really in tune with the game. It broke down on too many occasions. Um, but, you know, we're f- our finishing at the minute has been the difference. And I think the Wolves game, we had 24 chances and scored one. Um, and then against Leeds, I think it was 27, 28 maybe. And we scored seven. So it's always about our finishing. And in relation to the opportunities we create, when we're really, really sharp and ruthless, we get the five, six, sevens, which we've seen now over the years. But just for the last, you know, we've been winning games of football, but been nowhere near as ruthless as we were in the David Silva, Guerrero period of the club. I thought we were so clinical in them games and the finishing was at a different level. But, you know, the signs are good now, you know, because we, we started finding the back of the net. Whilst I respect the statistics that you just quoted, and particularly from a man like you who's been a manager, and I've never done that job, the one thing I observe is that um, City played against the Leeds side, who we're all screaming as supporters that we want teams to come to the Etihad or play against City and not try to cheat, not trying to time waste, not try to put 11 men behind the ball. Leeds didn't do that. They tried to play football. Uh, they might have played it naively, some people would say, and you can correct me or correct the, the people who've said that if you want, but that's how they've described Leeds' performance. And you could argue to a point that Newcastle played a little bit like that. So against Wolves, against Southampton, um, you know, against Crystal Palace, teams who were eking out every goal kick, uh, kicking everybody that moved, it sort of worked for them, um, not always in terms of, of a win, you know, like obviously Southampton got a draw, but at the very least they did was not get battered like City did against Leeds. Is it as simple as that? If, if you were the manager of the opposition, would you think to yourself, well, look, we're going to lose today, so let's at least damage limitate, and if we can nick something great and steal a victory, or do you come there and try and play football but risk getting a heavy beating? Which way do you approach it? You, you certainly don't. You never come in thinking we're going to get beat today. You know, whether you're Burnley, whether you're West Ham, United, whoever it is, the manager, you have a game plan in place. Um, and that based normally around trying to suffocate City and stop them creating opportunities to score. Um, if that plan goes wrong early on and you lose one and you're one nil down, 
then you try and stay against City to 70, 75 minutes at 1-0. And then you, you, you have a goal. Because with City, once they get that second goal, if they've got that second goal on 22, 23 minutes, you're in all sorts of trouble. If they get that second goal on 81, 82, then it's not so bad. You know, you can see the game through and not really affect confidence and, and not give your players a run around them. Um, and Bielsa, Bielsa got it wrong. Um, you've got to give your players something to hold on to. But when you're 4-0 down, 5-0 down, and then they attack down the right-hand side, and, and I was co-commenting on the game, and, you know, they ended up with six in the box when the ball went into Edison's hands. There's no logic to that. The, the front men, James, um, it was playing as a one, but he was chasing the centre-halves down. So you know how good City ro rotate the ball between the centre-halves and Rodri, and then they come out there. That's always their pattern, start from them three, and then they build from there. James is chasing them. And I'm thinking, why? Why would you not drop back in, go side of Rodri, and let the centre-half step in and give them a place to where we're going to allow them to come to, then we're going to press in tighter areas. And, you, you know, it's much more hard. It's more difficult to play. But City were playing two passes from the back and taking four Leeds players out of the game. And there's no logic to that. And I, and I don't care what, how Bielsa's thought about in the game um, and, you know, as such a, a reputation. He got it horribly wrong on the night and he left his players exposed to be embarrassed. How do you coach players to always make the right decision? Because is that something that has to be ingrained in the player? Because Pep's getting all the credit. It feels to me like he deserves all the credit. But how has he managed to get sort of 22 players who always seem to make the right decision in every situation? I think there's a process. I think the way that um, they train, you know, it, it, it's repetitive. You know, you've seen Cancelo and Torres, you know, over the years, we've seen players that have taken a year, you know, may, may, maybe eight to eight to 12 months. And then the following season, they're, they're better and they keep improving. And it's just understanding the, the rotations, the movements and how he wants to do things. And the patterns are very much the same when you watch it from, you know, over the years and, you know, the conundrum is for the opposition manager to try and find a way to suffocate that. And the managers do. Uh, there's spaces where City used to, re with Silva, really hurt the opposition in little pockets outside the box to the right and left. And the clubs, football clubs, they're, they're blocking them off now, managers, you know, and he has to find another way of going around that, finding a different way of doing it. And, uh, and it's an ongoing thing because as soon as you get a, something going like we're doing at the minute, such as the... Um, such as the quality of the analysis and, you know, the detail that I'll be going into. Every club that are coming will have an idea of how to stop that. And then, you know, you, you'll, you'll try and find another way to do it. I always think we struggle against a back five when the, 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 the wing backs go man for man with our wide men when we play a 4-3-3 three, three and stick with them. I always think that stifles us. West Ham, uh, sorry, Wolves did it really well. And they've done it now over the seasons. They've found a way that you know of suffocating the game against us. But the for, for for City, it's just repetitive. It's you know doing them continually in games and tightening everything up and giving the players incredible belief, um, and also demanding. The work rate is phenomenal, you know, and that has to come from the manager. You know, the if you lose once a play breaks down, you see the reaction, and it's not a recovery run. It's a recovery sprint. You have to sprint. And if you're not sprinting, you won't play. And that's something that I really admire about the manager. You know, yes, we know the patterns. Yes, we know the play. The percentages, uh, possession is incredible in relation to everyone we play. But on the flip side of it, when we lose play, lose the ball, sorry, if you're not sprinting and you're just making recovery, run, uh, recovery runs into certain areas, I've seen, I've seen the manager leave players out. And it's been down for that for me, the fact they're not working hard enough. And it is, it is relentless. And, of course, you know, I think the manager has to take great credit for that because it, the consistently to do it game after game after game after game, like City are doing it, that can only come from the manager. You've got good staff around you, but the players see his eyes, they see his body language, they see his intensity, and they react to that. If he drops off, players will drop off. If he's a smile on his face and there's a, a bit of joviality and the, the player sense it straight away and then they drop their standards. So, you know, again, I, 
like I say, I, I, I manage myself and I understand how difficult it is every single training session, every game to keep them standards so high. But Pep seems to somehow be able to do it. 